So we're going to talk about longitudinal waves, yeah? Now remember that in a longitudinal wave, the particles vibrate parallel to the direction of the wave propagation. So here we have a representation of a longitudinal wave, so you can see that the particles are vibrating in such a way, okay, where they are displaced uh, horizontally, okay, so assuming that the wave goes this way. And so one of the things that we need to do is to identify uh, places called compressions and rarefactions. So a compression is what it sounds like. Okay, this guy over here is a compression. This guy over here is a compression. This guy over here is a compression. Okay. And uh, rarefactions is the opposite. So this guy here is a rarefaction. This guy is a rarefaction. So on and so forth. Okay. And so now when we identify these, it's quite easy to see the displacement of the particles. So everyone in between these uh, points over here will be displaced like this, like this, so on and so forth to create these compressions and rarefactions. And that basically is how a longitudinal wave looks like. And so one nice thing that we can do, we can try to represent this okay, on a xd axis. Okay, nobody likes to look at that, right? I mean, uh, it's not very nice. So we try to represent it like a transverse wave. And so the first concept is that all these compressions and rarefactions are at, at that moment at least, at their original positions. And so they have an instantaneously zero displacement from their original positions. And so I'm you know, slowly marking that out. Okay. And if we take rightwards as positive, then it means all the guys over here, right, must be, of course, the, be displaced in the positive direction. And so we go like this, and we can join up the wave very nicely, like so. And we have a very nice transverse representation of this wave. And so we can also see that this is, of course, one wavelength over here. And so for a longitudinal wave, remember, a wavelength is the distance between any two adjacent rarefactions, or for that matter, compressions that would work as well. Okay, so it's that, of course, this is also a wavelength. So uh, one other thing that we can uh, see in longitudinal waves is that there will be a pressure variation along the wave. And so we can also plot a pressure graph centered around the atmospheric pressure. But this time, remember, rarefaction should always correspond to a point of minimum pressure, something below atmospheric, and compression to a point where it's of maximum pressure. Okay, and so I'm going to now, of course, just uh, plot all these points like a good physicist that I wish to be. And uh, now we join them and you'll realize this looks more like a cosine curve. Pardon my horrible drawing. Okay, but that's how it looks like. And so one nice thing to always note is that the uh, phase difference between the displacement and pressure graphs is actually always going to be uh, pi over 2 radians for a longitudinal wave. Just a nice little fun fact to know.